Hi, my name is Aaron Gerds, and I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Ash Clinical News. Uh, it's an absolute delight today to be with Dr. Dryling to discuss his abstract as part of our on-site coverage of the Ash Annual Meeting for 2022. So I read your abstract, I thought it was fantastic, and that's why we invited you, of course. Uh, and I noticed that this was done through a consortium. And I always like hearing about these consortiums because it's so much effort to pull these people together and really do meaningful work. Could you tell me a little bit about the mantle cell uh, uh, lymphoma consortium? Well, that's a good point uh, because why did we come up with such a European consortium? Mm -hmm. Well, simple question. When we started, or simple answer, uh, none of these individual countries were, you know, had meaningful number of patients. And so they realized, you know, there's no chance but you know, to join forces. Yeah. And, and that is what we did. And just to tell you a little bit of story, uh, our first founding meeting, if you want, so was 2000X to Munich. Oh. And we picked a very nice resort, so everyone w should have been relaxed. What happened, you know, cl close to the highest mountain in Germany, the Zugspitze, it was raining three days all through. So people couldn't even leave the hotel. Oh, wow. So they had to sit together discussing science, and that was the starting point of all of our uh, collaborations, incorporating clinical trials, yeah. but also basic research. Oh, that's fantastic. So nature had a hand in this. That's Absolutely. Yeah. So when we ask the nature versus nurture question, we know the answer. Well, good. So uh, this study that you presented had three arms. Uh, could you explain what was the rationale for including these three arms in the study? Well. First of all, we have to take a standard arm, a control mm -hmm. arm, and that is the current, well, I, I should say, the previous standard yeah. of care, and that's incorporating autologous transplant in younger patients. Yeah. And that gains you uh, uh, about a couple of years disease-free survival. Mm -hmm. So there's really a gain. However, there's also a price to pay because high dose chemo not just only yeah. have high efficacy, but also high toxicity, acute and delayed. And so that's the starting point of the study. And then we talk in Europe. Five doctors, ten different opinions. Yeah. And so we, after a lot of discussion, we were not able yeah. to conclude on one comparison. And we wanted to be on the safe side, so that was the add-on. Ah, arm. okay. So autologous plus ibrutinib. And then some of us um, who were more innovative said, well, we want to get rid of autologous altogether. And so, therefore, we have an ibrutinib only arm, mm. all of them plus chemo, though, and skipping autologous transplant. Yeah. And that is how we came up with this large trial, almost yeah. 900 patients, almost 300 in each yeah. of the arms. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, around 290 <laughs> patients per arm. So, the whole idea was, okay, we take the standard of care at the time and add the new agent, and then also, well, can we back off, uh, reducing, hopefully, toxicity and improving outcomes. So, a fantastic design for the study. So... In the end, what, what was better? Well, it's a complicated study, so I have to guide you through three different comparisons. Yeah. Uh, first thing, standard arm versus add-on design. Maybe not unexpected, uh, the add-on arm plus ibrutinib did perform better. What is a little bit surprising, though, that it was not only statistically uh, uh, significant, but also clinically meaningful. Mm -hmm plus 15% of the three years. Yeah. So, and I could also add, there is a suggestive benefit or a numerical benefit of overall survival in the range of 5%. So far, I'm not allowed to analyze statistical voice. Yeah. So the even more interesting data is the I only arm. So our hypothesis was, it's only justified to keep the autologous transplant if there's a clinically meaningful benefit, right? Mm -hmm. um, in fact, what happened, the curves flip around. So the ibrutinib arm is superior yeah. to the autologous arm. And again, the difference is in the range of 15% PFS after three years. And therefore, we think both study arms are superior in PFS. Both ibrutinib-containing arms are superior in overall survival. So the old standard autologous transplant is gone. It's gone. It's the past. <laughs> and so the question is, what is superior? Which yeah. one of these two study arms, right? Yeah. Uh, if efficacy is overlapping, and this is where toxicity steps in. Yeah. So we had a look at that, 
And obviously, the early myelotoxicity is only being detected in the autologous, containing, uh, yeah. autologous uh, stem cell transmission containing arm. The interesting thing, though, on top of that, there was a significant delayed uh, toxicity in the combined arm. And, and that, that maybe is easily uh, explainable because this is takeover, you know, from the initial uh, hematotoxicity. So to sum up, comparison all of these th three arms, uh, definitely both ibrutinib arms are superior uh, concerning PFS and overall survival, and overall survival, you know, mm -hmm. you will never catch up with whatever kind of, yeah. of salvage treatment. And secondly, if we compare these two arms, the ibrutinib only versus ibrutinib plus autologous, so far, definitely ibrutinib uh, arm is much more tolerated and efficacy is overlapping. So, in my opinion, this is the new standard of care. And I would agree. I, it makes sense that the performance is better for ibrutinib when you add it in, and then you, the toxicity is then better when you remove transplant, but doesn't affect the efficacy from what you can detect. I mean, it's, it's a win-win, really, and we rarely see that uh, in studies of this nature. So it's certainly, you know, congratulations to you and the, and the consortium for doing this. So, you know, a lot of our audience and readership are practicing oncologists out there in the community, uh, you know, maybe somewhat distanced from a, a, a a large center that means doing lots of transplants. So what would you tell that uh, practicing uh, doctor, say, you know, Dr. Smith out at in normal Illinois practicing at Our Lady of the Blanks there? What would you tell that person how to, and they got a newly diagnosed younger patient with, uh, with lymphoma, what, how would you guide the care for that, that individual based on the results of your study? Yeah, yeah. Well, well that has obviously changed significantly. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, what I told my, my patients during the last couple of weeks um, stay tuned, hmm. uh, call me again when your induction is completed, yeah. and what I will recommend is switching off away from, from autologous transplant, but really to combine rituximab by protein yeah. maintenance. Yeah. So wh what we have achieved, we have significantly reduced chemotherapy, avoiding toxicity, uh, and that's quite a benefit, and even though coming up with a superior outcome, as you were saying, so the next logical question is, uh, should we skip chemotherapy overall? And this is what we do in CLL, right? Yeah. Um, and, and we are not yet there. We, we do have some suggestive data by MD Anderson, mm. by, by the Barcelona group, and they showed if you go for the low-risk mantle cell lymphoma, mm. then you're fine off. However, we don't know that for the high-risk patients. And therefore, we are starting two different randomized trials. Uh, within the next six months. Uh, and essentially what we are comparing, the nowadays standard, which is our chemo I, okay. versus the new standard, which is skipping chemotherapy all over, all right. either triplicate target uh, approach okay. or in the high risk going for CAR T cells. Okay. Well, fantastic. I know that with, with certainly with cellular therapies, things are gonna continue to rapidly change. That's tremendously exciting. Well. Again, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. It's been an absolute delight speaking with you, and congratulations on, on your abstract as well. Thank you so much. Thank you for tuning in uh, to our uh, on-site coverage, again, of the ASH uh, annual meeting for this year. Uh, and until next time, uh, we'll see you later.